I'm Marge Han. I'm going to do two poems. The first one is called The Way Back. A word that begins with Z. For a free cookie at the cafe, we rack our brains to name a twice-baked bread, not biscotti. The hint to ask the baker doesn't help because he's gone for the day, and I just know, I know it's a word built with brick and sandpaper consonants, mouth-filling syllables and nimbler tongue traces back to a widow's grief or a poor man's portion, or some enduring architecture of flour, water, yeast. And I believe you would, wouldn't you, wait the whole night while I skimmed the Z section of the dictionary, lingered over Zibeline, Zoysia, Zucchetto, mused, hey, did you know, Zig can move and be used independent of Zag. And you'd never, not even once think, Thank God the word begins with Z, not C, nor P, nor S. The word that begins with Z and means twice-baked bread is left unsaid in the cafe. No baker, no dictionary, no phone to call my brother's German wife. I say, tell me something I don't know, and you do. The sea cucumber, under threat of a predator, expels its internal organs, then grows them back. And somehow you are now talking about your own wild mysteries. I tell you one of mine. The unknown grows more unknown. It shimmers above itself. An unbroken lake, I hope I never find the shores of. And I hope I never know the end of any road a word takes which may be why I'll say I heart you, like you're a place I'm traveling through to return to again and again, heart instead of a word that begins with L, and I won't mean leaven, though you make me rise, and I do. And then the second poem is from a series of prose poems I'm writing in response to each element of the periodic table of elements. This is nitrogen number seven and features uh, a local interest. The compact fridge in my college dorm room could hold an entire pie left over from my closing shift at university pizza if I wrapped and stacked the slices by twos. All summer I lived on free pizza until I tried to defrost the internal freezer compartment with a hammer and punctured the coolant line. Even greasy pepperoni couldn't mask the metallic taste of Freon. I owe my life to Thomas Midgley Jr., who in 1930 inhaled this new wonder gas and blew out a candle flame to show that Freon is non-toxic and non-flammable. Too bad what works for a human can do a number on a planet. In a tough shed tucked in the mountains above Nederland, Colorado, Grandpa Bredo Morstel rests in a steel coffin, repacked monthly in a ton of dry ice. Prior to his relocation along the Continental Divide in 1993, he spent four years in liquid nitrogen at a fancy cryonics facility in California. Both coolants are odorless and tasteless, a good thing for the bears that survive global warming. Grandpa will taste like chicken. Nitrogen seems so inert to Antoine Lavoisier, the father of modern chemistry, that he named it azote, meaning without life. Should the reanimated Grandpa Bredo outrun the bears, what will his first words be? Mr. DuPont, your self-defrosting earth is leaking. I wrote this poem after seeing a Richard Avedon exhibit and documentary at the Met in New York City. In the documentary, he said, to be an artist, you have to nurture the things that most people discard. On the nine train heading uptown, a man with a Duane Reed bag teeming with scraps from someone else's cast out life finds home in a little girl's face. His long pencil strokes a white page clipped to a stack thick with others' faces not yet found. He is happy there in the dark almond of her eye, then her nose, then her shy, pleased mouth. Across the park, Richard Avedon looks for faces in stones, some funny, others malevolent, no two alike, he is his own widow, every photo the death and deathlessness of a moment, each a fragment of his own stony face. The gazed, the original gazer, then there's you. 
whose truth, whose tragic isolation lies in a portrait, whose unflinching contradiction is outlived. The snake that wrapped itself around Nastasia Kinsky's naked length flickered its forked tongue to tease the quiet fruit of her cheek. Richard Avedon, limner of the invisible, two million people saw a snake kissing a goddess. No, then no, then no, then yes. His father, no father in life, turns to light. So what that we are skulls wrapped in the skin of our ravenous lives? Tell that to the one who dreamed of rubbing a queen bee secretions on the beekeeper's body. The hundreds of drones cover the keeper's face. No, 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 his face is a martyr's yes. Beautiful, grotesque, the face tells a story, a portrait foreknows only the ineluctable end. My subway stop comes too soon. I want to stay here, to witness the portrait finished, to see his pencil comb her hair, trace the halved fig of her ear, cup her chin before the world forgets her face.